Hey everybody, hope you guys are having a great uh, Wednesday today so far. This is Coach Bill with Weight Loss Made Easy Solution. Uh, today I'm on here to give you guys an update on my six week diet down. Um, those of you that follow me know that I've been periodically doing these videos to kind of give you an update on uh, the new protocol that um, I'm working with, uh, with Emily and I. And you know that I like to uh, do things myself and do my own research on myself, especially when it comes to either finding a better way to or escalate adding lean muscle or losing that belly fat or body fat, especially for those that are 40, uh, 40 and over. Because obviously Emily and I are well over 40 and over. So um, I'm looking for a better uh, or easier, more efficient healthier ways of you guys losing that unwanted belly fat when you get over 40. Uh, you guys know that a lot of that issue comes from imbalanced hormones. So you can go to my uh, YouTube channel, guys. Um, you can type in Bill Mabry, subscribe to it. There'll be some videos on there concerning uh, how, to be, how to escalate uh, belly fat. You can also go to my YouTube channel, or you can go to my uh, Weight Loss Made Easy Solution. Facebook page, group page, private, and I'll have videos on there also, along with many uh, different types of fat burning recipes also. So guys, this is my, uh, this is my update on my six week diet down plan. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, the last couple of weeks, um, I screwed up, uh, but I, I'm glad I did because this shows how each how we're all so different as individuals and the reason why I'm bringing this up is that because you guys know that I uh, we monitor our glucose levels as far as where our sugar levels are in our bodies and we also monitor our ketone levels well we've been doing this uh, uh, you know this uh, primal eating or ketogenic diet what you guys want to call it combining it with uh, intermittent and prolonged fasting and also uh, very very low carbs and I mean you know I'm trying to stay at 20 or less during the day but um, what happened was these last couple of weeks is that um, first of all I probably should tell you what the six week diet down protocol is it's where uh, we're doing I'm, I'm a big fan of doing alternate day fasting um, but the technical part of it is that most of you got, we're, we're still doing uh, some type of intermittent fasting every day anyway. Even those of you out there that aren't doing any type of fasting, you are doing some type of fasting because obviously you're not eating at night while you're asleep. So you're fasting at night, so, so you are doing it. But what we're doing is extending our fastings longer. And so, for example, on my alternate day fasting, the six-week plan, uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I do a, is my, which I call my non-fasting day. I still don't eat anything till noon because that's just how my body is, is, uh, is working right now for the last few years. I really, it, it, I really feel better that way. We also work out in the morning uh, in a fasting state. We never, never eat before we, uh, or have any kind of uh, re, uh, post or, or uh, pre-drink uh, or anything or food before we lift because we want to get the full benefits, the health be uh, benefits while we're working out in, in a uh, fasted state, especially at our age uh, because it actually helps to produce more of the uh, more new stem cells which will help to uh, slow down premature aging. So we, we work out in a fasted state. We usually don't get done until 11 o'clock or like 11.30. And we'll have our first meal around 12. That's on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So those are our non-fasting days. Our fasting days uh, is going to be, um, our last meal is going to be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We don't eat anything until 12 or 1 o'clock the next day. So that uh, comes around, I don't know, around 23 hours of fasting. So we're doing our fasting days is Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Now, because Emily and I work out so hard, and we're looking to really uh, keep adding lean muscle on our fasting days, we usually, we sometimes will have our first meal at around 9 or 10, but it's going to be a, a very high good fat, moderate protein meal, very, very low 
carbohydrate. Like I said, I'm trying to stay down in the 20 grams or less per day. So we'll do that on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Now, sometimes I don't have that first meal at 10 o'clock. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It depends on what I'm doing that day or where I'm, where I'm going. But i got to be careful because I, mean, I do want to put on uh, lean muscle, so we just want to make sure we're getting enough protein each day. Those of you that are 50, 60, or 70 or older, uh, you have to take particular care about your protein intake because you need more protein being that old. Uh, you're not young anymore, so you're not metabolizing the protein the same, so you need a little bit more. We found that out. And science is, always saying, is also saying the same thing. But anyway, what happened in this last couple of weeks, guys, is I basically sabotaged my two, at least two weeks. How do I know, know that? Well, by testing my blood sugars on my fasting days. So what happened was I, I knew, I knew that I'm carbohydrate sensitive, which means I'm sensitive to higher carbs during a meal, uh, especially starchy carbs. They really react to my body badly, uh, which means it raises my uh, sugar level, my glucose level in my blood dramatically, and it stays in my blood for a while because I'm storing a lot of that in my muscles and in different organs. I'm not really, I'm not burning them off, I'm actually storing them. So uh, what happened these last two weeks is on my last meal on those days, or if I'm doing a Tuesday meal at two o'clock, I was having a little more carbs. Now, I'm not going crazy with it, but on, I was having a little more carbs, which means I was probably having 30 to 60 grams of carbs on my last meal. Now, because my body is so sensitive to carbs, it reacted to where my blood sugar jumped way up. Now, my blood sugar normally, when I'm doing everything right, I'm staying at the 20 grams a day or lower, and I'm keeping my last meal very low carbs, having most of my carbs at my first meal, I'm going to be at the blood, blood level or a glucose level that I want to be at. That's putting me in deep autophagy or fat adaptation. And I'm going to be in the low 80s, mostly 80s, uh, down to mid-70 uh, range. And then on my fasting days, just before I have my first meal and my fasting days, I'm going to be all the way down to 62. And you guys saw that video I did a couple weeks ago where I tested my blood live and showed you how far down I was got to 62, which most uh, health professionals, doctors freak out at that because they have no education in fat adaptation. But... But you guys do. You guys know, and you've heard me talk about that once I get down to the mid-70s or the low 60s, because I'm fat adapted, my body has switched over from burning the sugar or the glucose in my blood as its primary energy. My body's so fat adapted that I'm now switching, I've switched over to burning the ketones that my liver is producing as its primary energy. And besides, science has been telling us this for decades that uh, when you switch over to burning ketones, which come from your fat, your own stored fat. So I'm burning, I'm taking the, my own stored fat, putting it in my liver, and my liver is converting it into ketones. And that is what I'm burning as my primary fuel, which is known by science as rocket fuel. It's great, great food for the brain, and it has so many health. When, when you're actually doing that, you are putting yourself into an environment known as autophagy, which is known to fight many diseases, and is also known to help flush out inflammation, which we need today because of this COVID-19, and helps boost the immune system up, which we need today because of this COVID-19. So there's a lot of benefits to it. But what I did was I, I was having uh, larger amounts of veggies. Um, I might have been overeating on my nuts. Um, on Friday nights, uh, we would have a date night. I would probably go uh, out and have bread or more stuff than I normally would. On Sundays, which normally is my off day, 
I may have a burger with fries and stuff. Well, this all added up because I'm so carbohydrate sen sensitive. This started to add up, and my blue blood glucose levels were were up, bouncing up to around 94, 89 in that range, and that's not normal for that's not normal for for me. And my ketone levels were low. So I I was monitoring this with my glucose uh, meat. A meter, so I had to make some changes. So what I'm going to do right now is I haven't checked my sugar level yet, and let's see where it's at right now, and then I can explain uh, why why it is where it's at. So um, honestly, I, I don't think it's going to be as low as I want it because my body is just hasn't adjusted to the lesser carbs yet. I think. So I've got a lot of stored glucose or glycogen sitting in my muscles and in my uh, organs, so I'm using that up now. I am back on track on doing 20 grams a day. I'm back on track on eliminating uh, most of my carbs at my, at my last meal, staying very low on, on those. But I just started, so let's see what happens. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and get ready here. So here's, uh, what finger do I want to do? Let's do this finger here. Okay, let's go here. Here we go. Let's get some blood out of here. Uh, let's see. There we go. I got a little bit of blood. Let me get some more out of here. If I don't get enough, it won't register. Come on. All right, I got some in there. Let's turn my meter on. I got my meter on. Let's put my strip in there. Got it going. Got some good blood going here now. Go ahead and see what happens here. Okay, here we go. All right, there we go. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm at 86. Which is not bad. I mean, I'm I'm happy with that. I'm in. Uh, I've got uh, a numerous amount of ketones that my bodies are uh, utilizing. Honestly, I thought I would be back up in the 89s or 90s. So, let me tell you what I had to do. I started yes yesterday. What I had to do, guys, is um, yesterday was my fasting day. So I had to. I ate uh, some eggs and bacon at around 10 o'clock and that was it no i had no vegetables no carbs so i did that so then at two o'clock which was our last meal because it's our fasting day at two o'clock we had uh fish i had fish shrimp uh i had some i made uh i had an avocado with celery in it and with balsamic vinegar and i took a tablespoon of olive oil along with that and kept my carbs super super low, and then I'm then I did then what I was doing these last couple of weeks during my fasting days is around um, I don't know I think it was around seven o'clock or eight o'clock I was actually having a heavy, uh, fat coffee with heavy cream in it so obviously I wasn't doing a true fast because cream's got calories in it I was doing that for two weeks a couple times a week during my fasting days. So that pretty much affected me. Now, see, Emily's different. Now, she could do the same thing I did. I mean, she, could, she did the same thing, but her blood sugar stayed way down still. That just shows how different our bodies are. I am very carbohydrate sensitive. I can't do that. When I fast, I have to do a true fast. It means zero calories, none, in order for me to get down to my normal blood sugar and to stay within fat burning to to maintain my my low body fat or it or take on more fat or uh, take off more body fat so being at uh, at 86 at around um, uh, what uh, 20 yeah, 22 hours 23 hours I think is, is good I mean I've got a good amount of ketones now also I exercised before I took this and we all know that your glucose levels are always going to be higher when you're exercised because that's just your body's natural way to reach into the muscle 
and draw some of the glycogen that's stored up in the muscles, you're always going to have a certain amount of glycogen in your muscle, which is glucose, sugar. And it's going to bring, it's going to take that glycogen, convert it into glucose while you're exercising so you have enough energy to actually uh, burn off or to keep going through your exercise because you do need energy. So I, so I, I worked out uh, about an hour, hour and a half ago. Normally what you'd want to do is probably take your glucose readings two to three hours after you train, and then your glucose level will drop. But I'm happy with seeing uh, 86 at my glucose level right an hour after I'm exercising because that just shows that I'm basically back to where I want to be. Now, what I'm going to do for these next uh, couple of weeks is I'm going to be very, very strict on my uh, amount of grams of carbs I bring in my body. I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to keep my last meal very, very low on carbs, but I'm going to, I'll, I'll, my first meal on my non-fasting days, I'll add a little more carbs to my, to that meal, which is around noon. So I'll burn a lot of it off. Now, some of you might be freaking out, or if you're a medical professional, you might be freaking out saying, well, that's way too low carbs and you're going to crash. Well, you guys saw my readings a couple of weeks ago. I was all the way down to 62. I worked out uh, prior to that number, which means I had plenty of energy to exercise, even though my glucose levels were low. Because remember why? I'm fat adapted. I don't need the glucose in my blood to operate my body. My body is very efficient on switching back into uh, ketone mode where I'm using ketones as my energy. And that's why I can continue and recover as quickly as we do when we exercise and why we aren't tired, okay? Because where bodies are fat adapted, that's where you want to get to. No, it's not going to happen overnight. You got to train it. Just, just like I said, you know, each, each of us are individual. So how long does it take? Who knows? We'll just see, you know, you just got to see how strict you are and what kind of a protocol you have, and if you're eating enough good fats or eating enough good protein, you know, that de de determines because science has been telling us that even if you are, even, even if you consume very little carbs, your body is going to go into an environment called glucose genesis. Glucose genesis will take the proteins that you're eating and even the fats that you're eating and can convert it into glucose. You see how that works? So there's a safety valve. Body's pretty smart, isn't it? There's a safety valve. So if you're not consuming enough veggies or enough uh, carbs, your body will convert stuff, stuff that you already have stored in your body into your glucose because your brain operates on about 18% glucose. So there always has to be a savings account sitting in your muscles in, or, in order to keep your brain healthy. Okay, guys? So, guys, that's my, uh, that's my video for the day, my update on my six-week plan. Yes, I screwed up. I'm human. I messed up. But this is a learning phase, and I'm glad I did it because now it shows that uh, whoever's like me, which is carbohydrate sens sensitive, we can, uh, we can blow through it and get right back on track again. You guys enjoy the day. If, uh, if you want to know more information about my online personal coaching on either, uh, because, you know, we, be, we, we're, we become uh, pre and type 2 diabetic consultants now. Also, we're working on a lot of people that have a fatty liver and reversing that. So if you'd like some information on that, you can uh, message me. So you guys have a great day, and we'll see you guys at the next video. Have a good day.